Hyundai is a brand which recently has gone from strength to strength, but a lot of focus has been put on their fully electric vehicles. For instance, the very impressive Hyundai Ioniq 5, the Ioniq 6, the Kona, and not forgetting the recently released Hyundai Ioniq 5N, their high performance electric car, which hopefully we should be getting in the next few weeks here at Hyundai Cambridge. So I can't wait to show you around that car. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss that one. But what if it's not viable to go for Fully electric? What if you want a hybrid or a petrol vehicle or a plug-in hybrid? Well, Hyundai are also updating that range as well. And the next car to get the facelifted treatment is this, the Hyundai Tucson. So in today's video, I'm going to show you around the existing model and also the new model and tell you all of the changes. So if that sounds good, then please keep watching. Plus, we've also had quite a few Tucsons arrive here at Hyundai Cambridge. So if you want to check them out for yourself or book in for a test drive, then you can do that via the link down below with one of our sales associates. But first of all, let's start with the external changes to the Hyundai Tucson. And I know what you're thinking, it doesn't look like a lot, but most of the serious changes have been on the interior. Both of these cars that I have here are the sporty N-Line trims, although this new model is the N-Line S, so it sits at the top of the range. Changes to the external of the cars are very minimal, but you must admit, not much needed to change. It was a very good looking car. Some of those small changes include a new badge. So around the front of the old car, you've got a grill colored badge, which almost melts into the grill. However, on the new car, it's slightly more prominent and it's finished in a mattified effect. It looks quite sporty. The grills themselves have also changed. Previously, it had a horizontal design, and now you've got more vertical elements to give it a more dynamic look. The daytime running lights are very similar. You still have this four lighting signature, which are stacked within the grill, but they're just slightly more prominent on the new car. Previously, the indicators also sat within the headlamps underneath, and now they sit within those daytime running lights. So it gives it a bit more of a sporty refresh. You've also got a redesigned grille at the bottom of the car as well. Hyundai still want to offer some really interesting alloy wheels. The styling has slightly changed, but you still get 19 inch two-tone alloys. However, the center caps have very slightly adapted just to look a little bit more sporty. The higher spec versions get body colored wheel arches, which are finished in this squared off design. This matches with the latest Hyundai Kona. And it's a similar story around the back. In fact, even less has changed to the back of the Tucson. But once again, that's no bad thing. It was already quite a modern looking car. It was one of the first to see this central bar which run all the way along the back. So of course, they didn't really want to change that. Now you may be wondering, does the Tucson not have a rear wiper? It does, but the rear wipers are actually built up here underneath the spoiler. I love that. It gives it that clear, clean design, but you still get the real practicality of a rear wiper. Now you may notice that one of the small changes, however, is the badge is just a little bit more prominent on the outgoing model than it is on the new one. I don't necessarily like that, but what I do like is the change to the rear diffuser. So before you had a very simple rear diffuser with twin tailpipes, but on the new model, you've got this sporty looking rear diffuser, which is separated by this central bar. I actually really like that change and you still get the two twin rear tailpipes. But as I mentioned, most of the changes have come to the interior and specifically the cabin of the Tucson. So let's refresh ourselves on the interior of the outgoing model. The Tucson has always been first and foremost about family life. So there's plenty of storage and space in the front of this cabin, but it has that sporty touch because this is the N-line trim. Let's talk about the steering wheel. Completely round in shape, it's leather wrapped and you've got some red contrast stitching. You also have the N badge at the bottom, although it's not flat bottomed, and you have this quite interesting 
central part that you can grab here. You've also got gear selectors behind the steering wheel and you've also got quite a large square digital instrument cluster. Your infotainment screen is housed in this central squared off section. It is quite small compared to some of its competitors, but it's really easy to use and you've got loads of sub settings. Underneath, you've got your climate control built into this central section. Most of these buttons on this section are touch sensitive and you do have dual zone climate control. Underneath, you've got two USB chargers and you've also got some 12 volt charging as well. More buttons, which are built into this large central section, include your heated seats as well as your rear view camera. You've got two cup holders in this section and you've also got some slightly unconventional buttons for selecting your gears. In this central section, you've got a really large central armrest storage and you've also got just a little bit of storage down the sides as well as somewhere to put your mobile phone in the centre here. You do have quite a large glove box and you've also got quite a lot of storage in the doors as well. Because this is the sporty N-Line model, you get these leather and Alcantara seats with the red stitching and you also get this central plastic section in the middle of the seats. The cabin itself is a really nice layout. You've got these air vents which almost swoop into the central touchscreen and then almost join together around the doors. You've also got this piece of material which also runs around the centre of the car and it's also finished off with a slightly sporty graphic in the corner of the dashboard. And to be honest, it's hard to find things that I don't like about the interior of the Hyundai Tucson. But let's take a look at the changes that they've made to the cabin of the new model. You will find some elements of the Tucson which have remained the same. You still get these same seats which are really nice, the Alcantara with the leather and the contrast stitching and also this plastic panel up the top. However, Everything else pretty much has changed, including the steering wheel. Though it's still wrapped in leather and you still get the contrast stitching, it's now more conventional in its shape. You just have this central bar down here which houses the N-Line badge. You don't have those middle sections anymore. You still get physical buttons and you get the gear selectors behind the steering wheel. However, instead of a H on the steering wheel, you get four dots. This actually is Morse code for H. Behind the steering wheel you still have a digital instrument cluster but it's much larger and it now blends together with a second 12.3 inch screen. The touch screen is now much larger and though it's still very easy to use you'll see that the widgets are much larger which means it's easier to use when driving. In fact, this version of the Hyundai Tucson actually gets more buttons. So rather than haptic buttons underneath the screen, you get physical shortcut buttons here. You also get a separate climate control dial section, like previously, which is fully digital. And you get physical controllers for turning up and turning down your climate control. Once again, making it easier for the driver when they're on the go. Underneath here, you still get the same amount of charging, but rather than USBs, you get faster USB-C charging and still a 12 volt charger. The wireless charging has also been moved from the center console onto this armrest instead. And this is one of the big changes. The gear selector is no longer on this center console. You'll find it behind the steering wheel, like you'll find in the Hyundai Ionic products. And this means that it leaves extra storage space. It means that this center console can be fully hollowed out with loads of storage underneath. Although you still get loads of storage inside the armrest as well. You still have some physical buttons for shortcuts to your 360 degree parking camera, but you'll find your heated seats on this section of your climate control instead. Storage is still very impressive. You get a good glove box, but now you get an additional bit of storage in front of the passenger. Everything is trimmed very nicely. This is the highest spec car, so you get leather all the way atop the dashboard with the contrasting stitching, and you still get a similar material which runs around the center of the car. Due to the dimensions remaining the same, that means the interior rear space is as it was. The rear seats are still able to be reclined and you get a pull-out armrest with cup holders. 
The recharging has also switched from USB to USB-C and higher spec models get the option of heated rear seats and rear climate control. And like that rear space, boot space is also the same as the outgoing model, with a small amount of storage underneath the floor for the plug-in hybrid. There's a retractable parcel shelf, 12 volt charging and levers to release the rear seats in higher spec models. The changes to the facelifted Tucson are mostly cosmetic, and that means that the engine lineup remains relatively the same. The diesel was discontinued a little while ago, but it's still available as a petrol, a hybrid, and a plug-in hybrid, as well as the manual and automatic version. Let me quickly run through the full engine lineup. The only manual option is paired together with a 1.6 litre petrol engine with 160 PS. All automatic versions of this engine also get mild hybrid assistance via a 48 volt mild hybrid system, but the same 160 PS. Moving up the range, this engine can also be paired together with a self-charging hybrid system, able to run in electric alone for longer periods of time and a slightly more powerful 215 PS. The final option sees the same 1.6 litre petrol engine paired together with a plug-in hybrid system, capable of around 35 miles of fully electric and 252 PS. The fantastic thing is that all versions apart from the manual are available in all-wheel drive. The way the car drives has also remained unchanged and that's no bad thing. The Tucson has always been a very comfortable and engaging car. Of course, with this being a modern model, that means it also has some safety upgrades. It mostly includes the addition of forward attention warning. This will scan the driver's face to make sure that they're paying attention to the road, as well as not looking drowsy. You also now get the option of a head-up display, which is also available for the first time on Tucson. So the changes to the exterior of the Hyundai Tucson may be minimal, but I think you'll agree that the interior changes have given this car a new lease of life. And personally, I'm glad they didn't change much about the external of the car because it was a really good looking model. But let me know, what do you think of the new Hyundai Tucson changes? Pop it in the comments down below. Don't forget, if you did want to check out a Hyundai Tucson for yourself, then you can do that at Hyundai Cambridge. I'll pop all the details in the description box. I really hope you have enjoyed the video and until next time see you later